Hi folks and welcome to the world of Vexilar lithium ion batteries. This little tutorial about lithium is designed to give you a little bit more insight into why Vexilar lithium is so special, but basically it helps you understand lithium ion batteries basically in general. Because I want people to understand that this is a much different technology than the lead acid battery that we've been using for so many years in our Vexilar units. Now Vexilar has been working long and hard to develop a lithium ion battery that can well meet the standards of what Vexilar is legendary for. And this design was many years in, in coming and we had to work through a lot of uh, um, problems with lithium and in that we needed to get it to work in our environment, the way we use it for ice fishing, all right? So if you were making a Tesla car, you need a different type of lithium or a different type of performance from your lithium than you would with a, a ice fishing scenario in this case. Uh, so first off, what we did was we designed the carrying case or the outer shell of the, the battery to be exactly the same as our existing lead battery. So it's a drop-in replacement. So you, people ask, what's the size? Will it fit? It's an exact replacement, all right? So it, it'll be a drop-in replacement every way, shape, or form. That was the first prerequisite. And, and, that, and that's great. Um, then we, what we had to do was we had to design the battery basically backwards. If you're a Vexilar fan, and I know many of you out there are, uh, we have a, a battery charger, an automatic charger for lead acid battery called the V410. Now the V410 battery charger, there's like a half a million of them out there. It's a great charger, okay? But we wanted to design the battery to also work with this particular charger. And so we had to design this battery to meet those specifications. Now, that's where the story begins, all right? We had to design the battery. So everyone makes a different lithium battery. Everyone says, oh, our battery's better, our battery's better. The true fact of the matter is, every lithium battery is unique and for the most part, custom. We built our battery custom for our applications, all right? So let's begin the story on, on lithium. You ever think about it? How many batteries from a cell phone does it take to make a Tesla car work? 10,000. 10,000 cell phone batteries are what goes into one Tesla car. And people say, well, well what is this element called lithium? Well, lithium is a very specialized type of, of material to deal with. It, the biggest supplier of it comes from Chile, actually, and it's made from a brine water solution, kind of like uh, the Great Salt Lake, all right? They got this brine water that has lithium in it, and they evaporate the water out of it, and what's left over is a, a pretty much a pure version of lithium, and they mine it, or they harvest it, I should say, out of Chile, and 87% and of all lithium is, is obtained this way. Now, you can mine it the old-fashioned way, you know, with trucks and ore and stuff like that, but it's much more expensive. It's not a, a way to go, so this extracting from brine water is where lithium comes from. And lithium has been known as an element for a long, long time as being a great material to use for a battery. The, the, the element has only one electron, and that is really neat because you can control the flow of that one electron. You can make the, uh, that one electron that circulates around the element of lithium to do different things. The problem was when you pull away the electron from the element of lithium, it explodes. <laughs> okay, it's, it doesn't like that, okay? And so you want to somehow control where the electron goes and how it reacts to its, to its mothership, the, the, the original lithium material. And it wasn't until 1991 that Sony figured out a way to safely control the use of the electron on the lithium atom to make it an actual battery. So the little electrons would stay and, and stay in a controlled environment without basically losing, losing control and continuity and starting a fire and burning things down. And then, man, I know, I know, I know. You, I've heard the same stories, airplanes falling from the skies, uh, tablets igniting randomly on fire uh, and things like that with lithium. When lithium first got going, that was the big issue was how do you control the thermal runaway if the electrons pile up too much on one side if you can't control the high end of electrons or the low end of electrons in a cell. That's where 
a thing called the BMS was developed. Again, this is a little lithium 101. I know there's people like there, there are chemists out there and really smart people that can talk about it a lot more sophisticated than I can, but I'm trying to keep it simple so that even I can understand it. But basically, what the BMS circuit is, is actually a circuit board. Now, what I've done is I've actually taken this battery apart. Now, never, ever take this battery apart, okay? It's not, it's not only not safe to do it, but it's not wise to do it because there's no way that you can fix a lithium battery once it fails or once it stops working. So cracking it open and thinking that you can fix it is not going to fix it. It's discarded. It's done. All right. But what I've done is taken it apart and, and taken our Vexilar case to show you what's on the inside. It's a series of battery cells. Each cell is 3.3 volts. Now, again, for our application, it's 3.3 volts. Uh, on your cell phones, it might be 1.5 volts. It, they're all custom built with different size cells managed by the BMS circuit. All right. This BMS circuit controls the flow of electrons inside the battery circuits. So they flow from one side to another at an even pace at all time. It balances the battery. It makes sure that the electrons don't all pile up on one side. And it ensures that the battery isn't overcharged or undercharged, which basically means too many electrons on one side and not enough electrons on the other. And that's what they found. If they could control the flow of these electrons inside the battery, they could make this thing have unbelievable power control. And that's what it did. It generated great amounts of power. So the Sony folks did it in 1991 in the first cell phones, and it worked out really slick for that. And since then, um, they've been working nonstop to develop different technologies or blends of lithium with other types of oxides. Now, the Vexlar cells that we have in this particular model um, are LiPo4 lithium. Now, LiPo4 is a, a blend of iron yeah, phosphate, all right? It's an iron phosphate bonded with the lithium to make it perform the way we would like it to perform. Now, there's many different types of blending that can go on with different types of oxides. Different materials give you different results. For example, this works fine for our applications, even in cold weather environments, because we're only drawing 300 milliamps at a time to power of XLR. You would not use this type of lithium battery for using an electric drill, for example. You'd use a different blend. Uh, for example, the cars, they use a special cobalt oxide with manganese aluminum oxide blend. They come up with all these fancy oxides that make the electrons function even in cold weather environments. But we don't need that because we don't draw heavy energy or need heavy energy in cold weather environments. So it's cost effective. I guess that's the bottom line. Because if you were to look at the advantages and disadvantages of lithium, you'd say, well, it's the weight is the big advantage. The fact that you can recharge it like 2,000 times if you properly take care of it. Those are big advantages with the lithium technology. But on the disadvantage side, um, the price is very high. So the price will come back and it's like double the price. So you want to hit a price point that's usable or user friendly for the end consumer. Also, because it's a circuit, okay, it's more fragile than a lead acid battery. So if you drop it or, or damage it in some way, the battery may just stop working. It does that for safety purposes. The, the cells might be in perfect condition, but if you damage the BPS, the battery management system, excuse me, the BMS circuit, the whole battery will shut down out of self-preservation. It wants to be safe, okay? Lithium has come along, lithium ion batteries have come a long way for safety. And the BMS circuits are more bulletproof than ever to try to ensure that you're using a safe battery at all times. I mean, stop and think about, you know, this battery is very volatile even in your cell phone. Even if you keep it in your pocket, you don't think about it that way. But all in all, lithium has come a long way to be a lot safer, but you want to prevent it from being drilled into, screwed into, damaged, or exposed to air or water in any way. If you do, you could have some reaction to it. It may uh, get heated up. It may actually even burst on fire if necessary. But we want to make sure that 
You treat your battery with a great deal of respect. All batteries should be treated with a great deal of respect because it seems so light and it seems so neat. Oh, oh there's nothing here. There's a huge amount of energy in this power pack. A big advantage with lithium too is that although this is a 12 volt, nine amp hour battery, at least that's what we call it. In actuality, it gives you actually 20% more power than you would have with a, a lead acid battery. So in a lead acid terms, it's like a 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery if you were to compare it to lead acid performance. And the reason for that is the power curve. When you're using a lithium battery, it likes to maintain a constant power output at all times until the very end and then it drops off very rapidly. A lead acid battery will maintain it for a fair amount of time and it'll start degrading and degrading and degrading. And you'll feel that, you'll see things start to slow down and you're like, oh, the battery's getting weak. With lithium, it never, you don't see that until the very end and then it drops off very quickly. Vexlar users may be a little bit new to that because they're used to saying, well, I, uh, my Vexar is getting a little slow here or the lights get a little bit dim, but oh heck, I can fish with another three hours. And you can. But with lithium, the power shuts off at 10.5 volts, whereas a Vexlar would easily shut down, I think, at seven and a half volts. So with lead, you can go down and use your Vexlar for longer periods of time. But with lithium, it'll protect itself. It protects itself from being overcharged and it protects itself from going too low on the bottom side, so it functions in that middle range area. Storage of this battery is also really important if you want to have long life, all right? It does not like heat. Lithium ion batteries do not like heat. If you look at Tesla, if you look at any of the big the battery companies out there, their nemesis is heat. So do not store this battery up in your attic where it's 150 degrees, okay, if you can help it. For prolonged periods of time. We also don't like to overcharge the battery. Like we talk about that with our, our battery charger, the V410 charger that we designed with a special management circuit so we can use our V410 charger. We tell people when you're done charging and the charging cycle is complete, simply disconnect it. All right. And when you're storing the battery, you don't need to store it fully charged. In fact, it's better for the battery that you don't store it fully charged. It likes to be stored at a 50% capacity, all right? If you, you can store it for years that way. You don't need to come back and check it every month like you do a lead acid battery. Lead acid batteries, oh, the maintenance on those, really, if you stop and think about it. To keep a lead acid battery working right, you've got to constantly keep recharging it in the off season, touch it up again, recharge it again, or keep the trickle charger on it all the time. You don't do that with lithium. A different mindset. Lithium doesn't like a constant recharge cycle going, charge it up, use it. If it drains down a little bit, no big deal. It doesn't need to be recharged all the time like a lead acid battery because it doesn't sulfate at a certain level. The capacity isn't diminished. The only thing that really hurts this bad boy is heat. So you don't want to store it in a warm spot. And, when it, and from that point on, the lithium ion battery may revolutionize how all of us fish in the future, but if you understand the logic of how it got started, where it comes from, the importance of a good battery management system to maintain the battery and getting one that matches your particular needs. You're going to be using your lithium batteries for a long, long time, and I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about this great new product called the Vexilar Lithium Battery. Good luck fishing!